Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to another Tuesday Teaching Tips with me, Sally Cathcart. Now, today I want to do um, talk about how being playful can really unlock the learning. And that goes for all of us, whether it's ourselves or our students. Because I wonder how being put on the spot with a question, how does it make you feel? I'm just going to take an example for myself. Um, mental maths, for example. I, I can vaguely do mental maths if I'm given my own time and space to do it in. But ask me for a very quick question being put on the spot by somebody I know who's got the answer already. And I feel very uncomfortable and my brain goes to fog and it will freeze and it will just but frankly stop working and go, Sally, you should be able to do this really now. I'm sure you know the feeling where you've been put on the spot. You've been asked a question by an expert or you're in front of a group of your peers and you you maybe you do know the answer, but you just go absolutely into that brain fog area. You know what I mean? And I wonder how many times our students feel like that in their lessons. You know, to be frank, they're not experts, are they, our students? And we expect them to keep an awful lot of knowledge in their head, bobbling around. We have it, so they should. They're coming for lessons at least once a week. You know, once a week, that's 30 minutes in um, a, a week that's got, I forget how many it's got now, but 10,050 other minutes in it. Um, a lot more than that. I can't remember how many now, but... The um, you see brain fog there going on, being put on the spot. So I think our students often do feel really quite petrified in terms of how their brain feels. They're trying to give an answer, but they just can't remember. But if we can turn it around and make the learning more playful and the way we're doing it more playful, then all of a sudden that frees up the, the juices in the brain. With my students, what I've been doing a lot of recently is getting them to say the letter names for scales or for pentacles or for triads or for anything I want them to do. But instead of putting them on the spot and getting them just to say it back to me, we actually take it in turns. The other thing that's made me think about this, and I'm still teaching online, uh, by the way, but um, I don't think it's just on that. But I know of quite a few uh, children recently who have been having their normal lessons, school lessons online, and suddenly they have to come up with an answer in front of their peers, maybe 20 or 30 other children, and the spotlight is on their face. They know that everybody is watching them. And it just really does scare and um, undermines their confidence. I know it does. So I mean, that, that really is what started off this train of thought. So let's explore some being playful. So let's pretend um, that we're in a lesson together and we're going to say the letter names of a G minor harmonic scale. OK, you up for this out there? I can see lots of people are watching. So we've got a couple of Liz's, we've got a Dixie, Kathy, Jill. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're going to join in now because this is a, a, a collaborative session. So we're going to say the letter names of a G harmonic minor scale. So I'm going to start with G and then you'd say A, and then I'll do B flat and you do C and I'll do D. Yeah, OK, like that. Up to the top. OK, so I'm going to start G, your turn, B flat, D, F sharp, A. Very good. So now let's go backwards. Gets a bit harder now. Yeah, this is where the giggles start. So I'll start G, E flat. C, A, G. Oh, I said both of them. Um, obviously, you would do it appropriate with your student. If it was a beginner or an elementary student doing a new pentachord, I've had some doing a, a D minor pentachord. So we've said a D minor. Or I've had some doing a G major scale. So we've done the G major scale like that. And it takes a bit longer like that, to be honest, but it's, it's fine. So then you can add an extra layer to it, if you like, and really emphasise the tonic and the dominant notes as well. So why not? Let's do it together. We're going to do this G minor scale again, and we're going to sit down on the tonic note and we're going to stand up on the dominant. OK, every tonic we sit, every dominant we stand. You ready? Uh, I'll go first again. Ready? And G, F, B flat, C, D. F sharp, backwards, 
we're going to keep sitting down G E flat C B A Ooh, nearly forgot and that's that's just lovely because again it's playful and it's fun and it's engaging it gets the brain working gets the body working as well you can do other things as well of course you know maybe it is that you do um, the tonic and the dominant in the thinking voice and of course you can then transfer this onto the piano and you can get them to stand up and sit down don't worry too much about the fingering you just play G A B flat we're not doing that alternately are we but G A B flat C D E flat F sharp G and so on and so forth like that yeah so I was doing it yesterday with a student who was doing chords and they were doing this um, spaces and stuff like that and trying to remember what the spaces you know understand the idea of the spaces and the skips and things like that you can use it for anything but that little playful element of my turn your turn sharing it with them really helps them to unlock the learning and makes it a much more powerful experience and doesn't feel so uncomfortable so hope that's helpful i'll be doing more of that this afternoon with my students hope you give it a go as well all right bye bye for now thanks for watching